Ignition sequence start. Six. Five. It's one small four, step for man. Two. One. Everything is going. Welcome to Stay Relevant, my wandering conversations with interesting people. I'm Mike Cibola. Joining me on this episode is Rob Henniger. He's the CEO and founder of Henniger Video, Henniger Media Services. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. Just thinking, we changed the name of the company in 1994 from Henniger Video to Henniger Media Services, and we've never Never been able to shake the Henning video name. That just video, keeps shows you know? up, keeps showing up. Our thought back in '94 was, well, you know, film is becoming, you know, outmoded and it's all video, but soon video is going to go that same path. So we ought to change the name, and we came up with the media services notion. But now it's, uh, you know, the the word video has become so generic, much like, you know. Uh, like film and or video or whatever. So it's, it's, you know, sometimes I think about changing back, but we're fine with what we got. So you started out as an editor, is that correct? That's correct. I actually started in theater. I got my degree in theater and speech from uh, William & Mary, and my career vision was to do some acting and then ultimately playwriting. And so I had a year, uh, I had a year in 70, 1970, I had a year of theater and got into film almost immediately thereafter. I started as a gaffer, electrician, gaffer, got into sound and uh, a little bit of everything and got interested then in editing after I tried a little hand at writing. My studies in playwriting gave me a sense of structure that got into editing. So I was film editing and that was 1976. How did you get to where you are now? You just, it, just, it seems like it just sort of happened, I'm thinking. But, well, um, I mean, did you plan from the beginning? You know what? I love editing. I did love editing, and it happened kind of at a time when, um, when I was doing film editing. Editing and video was not really feasible, practically. I mean, it was done, but it was done with literally with sometimes with razor blades. And uh, as that was evolving, you know, I was wound up as a supervising editor and I would go, I'd have to go to New York, Los Angeles, traveling around and I saw a lot of the post houses of that day and I came to realize, gee, people are really just sort of figuring this out as it goes along. I mean, I've, I was young, really interested in it and said, I can figure this out too. So I guess about 1980, 82, 83, right in there, um, got the notion of, of starting a small place and we were focused on uh, interformat editing. It was like three quarter inch mixed with beta cam mastering to one inch. You know, that was quite a quite a trick at that time, doing that and doing it well. And that's that's really how we got started with the first facility. And when, when did it really, I mean, did you have, did you have certain things you can point to is when you had really yeah, good I'd say the, spurts? Yeah, we, I mean, it, it took off faster than I thought. In 1986, we did our first political season. I had done uh, political work before. And that was when, you know, we basically wound up just doing more work than we thought even mathematically was possible. And it sort of fueled a spurt of growth that ultimately led to getting us to a point where we qualified to uh, bid on or we were asked to bid on a contract for Discovery Channel. We won the contract. Then we were the tech center for the Discovery Channel for uh, roughly about 10 years until they built their own place hired a bunch of our people and started doing it themselves. What was the step from when you were an editor to starting the company? Did you, did you hire a bunch of people? Did you say, just no, get together a couple of really, friends and say, hey, we can do this? And was it, when did you move out? I guess I'm looking for when you moved out of your basement. How did, <laughs> what was that step like? And what, I, what, was that, what did that look like? We had just sort of a, a back room. And the start of it, um, I had connected with a you know, really uh, talented and fun engineer who handled the sort of the technology and I remember deciding to do the facility and his name is Steve Wiedemann so Steve Steve and I um, were working together and at that time the bane of the existence of doing any kind of finishing was um, this horizontal shift that would happen when you went to make a dissolve it's like you go to make a dissolve you're lining up these machines and you'd make the dissolve and 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 the picture would shift a little bit in one direction and and Steve said, I can build a facility where that doesn't happen. I said, man, if you can make that happen, I let's go for it. So we... Uh, there's... So Steve, Steve made that happen. Well, yeah. and, but it, yeah. was, it was part of the, uh, the current technology of the day. Just things were not put together well. As long as we got that done right, we'd be fine. We were fine. And by and large, we were. I mean, 
um, you'd still get it every now and then. You'd have to adjust the machines, and then you were off and running. So it's it's kind of silly now to look back and and think what it took to make a clean dissolve a dissolve right. in those days. But uh, the breakthrough came when I had too much work is about what happened, and I needed to hire an editor. My my brother Jim had come to work um, out, of, out of college there, and he took over sort of the front office. So things I was dealing with at that time was interruptions by phone. There was just so much that I could do, so I needed, needed to be able to concentrate on the editing. I got the notion that what I would wanted to do was to hire an editor that was just better and more skilled than me because then they, they would take good care of my clients. What I hadn't figured out at that time is they would come in with some of their own clients, mm. and that was, that was what really sparked the growth. That editor was Bob Tiskowski, actually. And, um, and then we just made a rule to hire just the, to bring in the best editors that we could. In those days, editors really sort of had a following, and it sort of built along that. But like I said, the big, big push came with uh, um, the first discovery contract. And Discovery at that time was really growing very fast as well. As we picked up the contract, that's when they acquired the Learning Channel, which became TLC. That sparked what was a big growth phase for us. One of our core values as a company is innovation. And we define that as sort of finding a better way. Also, sort of the best, best tools in the hands of the best people. Those are just sort of philosophically where we've always come from. And um, that fueled a lot of the growth. It, you know, we, we uh, you know, they say pioneers had the arrows in their backs. I mean, we, we had a few, few pains, but by and large, it's what we like. I mean, it's like, it's what we like to do. Um, find a better way of doing something, find a better technology, put it to work, do better work. I mean, that's, that's really what, uh, what's fueled it, I think. And you, you, your clients are those who appreciate that and they understand that, you know, they understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. They understand that these are high end. Well, there's, there's that also, and then, you know, uh, you know, it's important for us to really be um, listening to our clients and, and understanding what are the issues that they're facing and really to look to solve those as best we can. Well, that's a good point. I mean, these days everybody has a camera, an editing suite, and, you know, on their computer. What you were doing, you know, what we were doing uh, 10 years ago, uh, five years ago, mm -hmm. is, is, is no longer valid. So um, it's important to innovate. And, and do you... Do you Sometimes find yourself up against that, or it seems yes, like, of course. It seems, and, and well, it seems like you. But it seems like you're in a, a little bit of a different realm. I mean, being more high end, Henry has always been known for high end stuff, more high quality. Um, I don't want to say bigger dollar value, but it's more of a high end production well, work. I mean, that's uh, at one level that's nice to hear. I, mean, I have been always. Um, committed to and doing the highest quality work that we can do that's appropriate to the to the job at hand, frankly. But do you, you, know, do you find that as a stumbling block in your, you know, some of your clients' minds? We have trouble at times. We find that the, uh, the image that we have, like I say, quality works for us. In that sense, the expectation or the idea that, well, quality's always got to cost more. Um, Another core value is service. So we have quality and service. And service is really fitting uh, both the, the job, the, the, the technology, to the, to the task at hand and the, level of the, the quality that's required. With that in mind, that's really more where we're coming from. We had an instance of this very recently where there was a, a photojournalist that had a had a problem. And he was almost afraid to come in. By the time he left, I mean, there's a very... Uh, relaxed, I think. Um, the, the people here have been here so long. They are so friendly, I mean, and embracing. It's like you walk in the place and you're working here, you're gonna get taken care of like no place else. And the cost is not gonna be you know, terribly different than any other place. Might even be less expensive when you get right down to it. So when you talk about the concept of value, what you, what you get for the dollars you spend, I think that we're, um, you know, we're very, very, very competitive. How do, you, how do you continue to innovate, though? How do you continue to move forward? Um, I mean, you have this new building. You've mm -hmm. been here for a little over a year now, yeah. um, which seems like a really big step for this business, I'm thinking, and this market. I mean, It is. There's, there's, no, <laughs> there's, there's no question about it. I think it's a, it is a changing business. I think that we, uh, 
I like to believe we fill a very important uh, need in, in the business and in the marketplace. We're really uh, focused on problem solving. When, when people are working with, either they've had difficulty and they need somebody to take care of it, or they anticipate that difficulty, and it might be either early in technology. Those are all things that, that uh, I think people understand and expect and will be in that. And if you're kind of working with it, we're, we're somebody you want to talk to so, and get involved with, ideally. Well, it sounds like um, you've been doing what everybody else is trying to do now because they see that they can't just be one thing and one one thing only. Um, a lot of post houses uh, are um, have either gone by the wayside or they've, they've managed to change, and they've rightly so, they've had to, um, into maybe a full service company where they are actually creating programs. They're helping, you know, they're more of a consultative uh, kind of a, um, an entity, which I think is is what clients need there is so much because there's so much out there now people don't know what to do so i'm thinking you know th so now a lot of people are forced in that into that highway where it sounds like you've already been doing that as as a problem solver and as a as a writing that new technology and trying to figure out oh how do we do this well you know like everybody else we're kind of working our way through it but it really just goes back to the early, early days of the company, which I described, you know, kind of coming through. It started to solve a problem of how to minimize the number of generations you went through in an analog world. It Then we got very early, we were the earliest, I guess, really into the nonlinear back in 88, 89 when it was first coming out. So we were working with the companies, EMC Square at that time, Avid at that time. The, you know, we were early into that technology, very early in the digital tape riding through. We were kind of a launch pad for Sony when they brought out digital beta cam. And, and we've always embraced, like I said, just finding a better way of doing things. I think one of the things that differentiates us now, and that speaks to the service side of it, is our project management team and our engineering. And these are components that, were, that are key in the world of post-production, but not common any longer. You, I think that the level, the depth, the talent that we have in engineering, which again goes to the roots of the company, starting with Steve and now with Sam Crawford, we've got a, we have a, just a, a long-standing both commitment to and uh, talent in the, in, in the engineering, the underlying technology, so that as something new develops, we're in it, pursuing it, whether it's, you know, high dynamic range or, like I said, 4K, 8K, any of the audio developments along the line, those are all things that, that kind of get our juices flowing. We really like to, we like to get into that. Thanks. So between the quality and the service and the innovation, and then our other core value is teamwork. And we just have a great team here. Many, many people here have been here for, you know, easily 20 years. So, um, you know, we, we get along well. We um, like working together and uh, appreciate what each brings to the, brings to the party. But uh, does, does always being on the cutting edge of technology, always having to use new stuff and, and being the kind of the forerunner and figuring out what's going to work for your, what solution, mm -hmm. what your solution is, I would think that would get to be expensive. Because there's, I'm sure that a lot of things come along that don't work. Yes. And, the, you know, the client wants the latest flavor. They want this. Yeah. But it sounds like you're not focused on the latest equipment or the latest this. You're focused on, well, how can we make best, make, go from A to Z yeah. for the client. And if you need something, you'll bring it in then. That's, that's exactly right. We, I don't think we have ever gotten into technology for the sake of the technology. As I described to you earlier, the sort of the latching onto D2 very, very early when the first machine was available because that solved the problem for us of these analog generations. Because component video was an analog world was a horror show. I mean, it was really, really a nightmare in terms of the timing of the signals and all the rest of it. You could easily, easily get uh, messed up. But once it went digital, and that's what we were watching for, it's like when you got component digital, you got the world, everything you need. And the things that we can do now with, with uh, you know, just a, just a computer, yeah, it's just amazing. And, you know, it goes on and on, that, that, that progression. I guess the difference would be that we, we've never feared that change, but really kind of embraced it. If it, if, it was, if it was bringing something to the process and improving it, uh, we were all for it. And we never tried to, you know, we always tried to figure out, in fact, what is, what is next? What, what can we do with it? How can we put it to work? So that's been our, 
that's been our view going forward. There was actually a comment, I think, on one of the list servers recently, or somebody's asking a question, I need this done, but I don't need, you know, like a Henniger level. Mm-hmm. What, do you, <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I mean, that, that's like, oh, okay, well, I guess, what does that mean? Uh, they think, well, we're, we're too good, we're really high quality, too high price, what does that mean? How does that make you feel in any, I mean? Well, I mean, uh, I guess, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> not great. It's not. You don't. You don't want to. Be, well, you I, talk about relevance. You don't want to be not needed at uh, you know whatever level it was. Well, it but, seems like a misconception. Is what yeah. I, I think it was. And, I, and I that's don't know. So. I mean, but, certainly, you know, from certainly from my perspective, right. no, it yeah, is, yeah, it is. I think that it's not. Uh, maybe not either. Either not having experienced what we do in terms of being here and not knowing and just going by our reputation, this is what I was telling you about before. We kind of we do hear this at times. People will come in and think, "Oh, it's this big corporation, and you know they've been around so long, and they did this and they did that, and there's you know the, the different awards or the you know the reputation is there, and it can be a little off-putting or, or frightening." Right. I think that when people, what we then do experience uh, is that if somebody actually does come in and work with us. Uh, they really do experience that our our core philosophy from the very beginning, from 1980s and forward, we're, we're completely committed to our client's success. And it's not just something that we say, it's something that we really believe and are deeply committed to. As a consequence, we have a lot of very loyal clients that we continue to work with and have for, you know, 25, 30 years. I mean, people just have been uh, tremendously loyal to us, and that's one of the one of the things that has given us um, some ongoing, I mean, one of the reasons that we're here, frankly. Where do you think uh, it's going in the future? I mean, when Abby came out, it was like, wow, where else can it go? But of course, you know, now we're at a file-based thing. It just keeps going. I know you don't have a magic ball or a crystal yeah. ball. But what do you think can happen next? What do you think is the next big thing? I have always said that every project has to be finished or else it's not a project. <laughs> and we're in the finishing, we're in the finishing business. So it, how that's done, um, how that's done and by whom, that's where we look, we look to be. We look to be offering the highest quality of finishing with, like I said before, the best, the best tools with the best people for just that process. And whether it's file-based or tape, or whether it was analog, digital tape, file, uh, we just look to be, um, you know, playing at that level of just the, the best that can be done. I don't see the, uh, you know, the finishing side of the business um, going away. I don't see, uh, you know, that very much growth in it. There is um, demand and, and desire for ever more kind of turnkey solutions. And I guess we started early in that, what used to be called a one-stop shop. That was one of our differentiators. We treat production really as a service, frankly. I mean, and so we're in the business of supporting producers and leveraging their capability. That works very well with, particularly with in-house producers, somebody that's, you know, at either at an, at an agency, PR agency, uh, nonprofit organization, and they, you know, frequently get either overwhelmed or expected to produce more than they, than they can. And um, that's, that's something that we see a big opportunity for us is really um, connecting with those kind of um, in-house operations and, and leveraging their capability and delivering, you know, better, better quality. So we've had some very good success with uh, international accounting firms and uh, large trade organizations and um, as well as the, the classic um, independent, the independent producers doing series, uh, delivering them on cable. Um, and then I guess the other big area for us, and starting back in 1986, as I mentioned, is the world of uh, political political advertising. And that has, from that, from that day on forward, and the issue there is that it's a short-term need. So the ability to sort of scale up and take on and deliver. One thing about political work is that the, you know, the deadline never moves. Election day is election day, and that's going to be it, and you're going to... You got to do what you can do, and uh, and you can also kind of track how you're doing, how the campaign does, and the people that you work with are, are. We work with the consultants, never the campaign directly, but we work with political consultants who might have several campaigns that they're working on at the same time. So we allow, we create uh, an environment where they can work in a concentrated fashion, and really uh, be very, very productive in terms of the work that they they need to get done. 
Do you find that you're an asset for maybe independent producers produ uh, pitching? Do they ever want to team up with you ahead of time or add you to their packages? You think We've that, done that, yeah. 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 Because, because if you're such a high quality, you're so well known, you, Discovery knows you. If you mm -hmm. say, well, hey, listen, I'm going to be, you know, here's my show, and this is what I want to do, and we've got, you know, this is where I'm going to edit it. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, not necessarily financially, but, you know, you kind of have an agreement saying, yeah, this is, this yes. is where we'll do a post. Yeah, no, they, we, we have done that and, uh, and happy to do it when we can. We really do like to team up with, partner with producers, production companies, uh, and take every opportunity to do so. My guest today has been Rob Henniger, the president, CEO, and founder of uh, Henniger Media Services. Rob, thanks so much for sitting down and chatting today. My pleasure, Mike. It's good to talk to you. Good to see you again. Thank you. The podcast is Stay Relevant, Wandering Conversations with Interesting People. Original music by Popmark Media on the web at popmarkmedia.com. See and hear more on my website at mikesabola.com. Until next time, try and stay relevant.